Hello, I'm Robin and welcome to Molten Modular DIY. Today we're making the fabulous 1U Molten Motion Meter. Now this is a different build to the 3U one because everything has to be shrunk down to be into 1U. It's got to fit into a tiny space at the back here and that means a very small PCB, which means surface mount components, which are tiny too tiny too tiny really now you can of course solder by hand surface mount components i've done it i've done many videos on doing it but that's what we've decided not to do with this because it just gets a bit too intense and ultimately we want people to be able to enjoy the molten motion meter without tying themselves up in knots trying to do teeny weeny teeny teeny tiny soldering and so on the board itself it has all this stuff already on all of the main components. If you want a proper through-hole soldering experience, then do go and check out the regular molten motion meter. But for this one, this is going to be all about the front panel. So you can see under here, look, look, see, see all of the components, all of the lovely stuff on there. All of the rings of LEDs. Now, funny enough, those are already on the 3U1 as well. You don't get to solder all these tiny LEDs on because that would just be something that would drive you I imagine completely crazy and so in this video I'm going to take you through this build it shouldn't be difficult it shouldn't take a long time but I've said that before so we're just gonna have to wait and see as we go through it I've not pre-built this to know how it's supposed to go I'm just going to go through it with the meager instructions provided by Bafaco and then hopefully this will be a guide to you as you build yours that's the plan How's it all going to work out? I don't know. So let's put the PCB and front panel to one side for the moment. Don't need that or that tool. Let's just have a look at the bits and pieces that we have. So we have a packet of what looks like all of the hardware. You've got what should be, I hope, uh, four knobs, four switches, eight patch sockets. A power connector. Let's have a look. Let's spread this out a little bit. There's the switches. There's a thing. There's a thing. There's a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of those. Four of those. Four of those. Sorted. Lovely. 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 So those are all the front panel stuff. The stuff that sticks physically through the front panel. They all have to be soldered in. So that'll be fun. Now we have this extra thing here. There's some Nerlies, which is nice. Look, a whole pack of four. That's super. The knobs, of which there should be four. And there is. And then in this little wrapping here, ah, we have the halos. Halos, the light LED thingies. One, two, three, four. Those are probably going to be the trickiest things to install. I imagine but hey we will find out so this is the entirety of what we're going to be doing it's not a whole lot of stuff it's just good chunky bits and pieces this is going to take no time at all let's steam on into it so going to the assembly guide which you can use of course to build this or you can use my guide which I will be producing and extracting from this video so you know it's your choice really there'll also probably be that strange and wonderful interactive guide available on the Bafaco website too so do look out for that so this is two pages <laughs> i mean it's a page and a half really uh, so it says put on the power connector put on the switches put on the pots put on the mini jacks Put on the light pipe crowns. There you go, light pipe crowns, that's the name. And then front panel, and you're done. Ooh, so cool. So this is ultimately where we're going to be playing, which is this PCB. So on this side, all we need, before we do anything else, is the power connector. That's the only thing that's going to go on this side. Everything else is on this side. So let's put that in first. You can see on on here where the little nick is and that refers to the chunk that's taken out of the power connector there so that should fit there yes that's going to drop into there and then we solder it on the other side 
I will need to turn on soldering iron, of course. And think about how am I going to turn that over and put that down and solder it. I think probably just with my fingers like that. Might put something under it over here just to balance it up a little bit. But that looks pretty easy. I'll put my safety specs on. The magnifiers as I can't see a bloody thing anymore these days. And was that a spider? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Thankfully. Okay, I can see that all right. So a bit of solder. My iron's almost up to heat. There we go. That'll do, I should think. And then simply all I'm going to do is present my iron to one of the pins and the uh, the pad. Leave it for a moment. Give it some of that. Hold it straight. Let go. That should all be good. And at this point, I'm going to turn on my little fan so that it blows away any of the fumes. So look at that. Turn it over, make sure it's the right way round, the right way up. It's not sticking out stupidly or anything weird like that. No, that all looks great. So I will do the other pins. Good, what next? The three position switches, that's these little things here. One, two, three, four. And these are gonna be going on this side. And now it's suggesting they need to be perfectly straight for soldering. Now this, this sort of raises a question at this point. Do we just solder them and hope they're straight? Do we put the front panel on in order to keep their position should we just be putting everything on i mean see the problem is if i put all the knobs on is that they're not going to stay on when i turn it over to try to solder these from underneath so there's there's reasons you know as to why you might put this on separately well let's have a look so if i put this in here it's actually got quite a good grip so i don't think there's any reason why i can't solder that on nice and straight now there's no orientation to the switches they just go on I just tend to do them the same way around just because that feels nice So they're all in position. There's no reason why they wouldn't be straight. It's not like when you're putting a pot in when there's a certain amount of give in either direction as to whether it's going to be straight or not. Or like the patch sockets which tend to float a little bit. These are in here pretty solidly. So if I put this down flat, of course it's not going to stand up for me. <laughs> or anything. I can put something underneath, there we go, to try to uh, try to keep it a little bit more what else can I stick under there that's pretty good that's pretty good so I think what I'll do I'll do a leg each and see that they are straight so I'm not going to press too hard I'm just going to hold that there see that's soldered this one here too. A little bit of wobble. <laughs> Not gonna, oh, yeah, it's all gone over. Try that again. One, two, three. last one here now let's have a look see they all look pretty flush to me and if I was to put the front panel over the top I 
they all sit nicely so good let's keep going let's see if I can solder all of the rest Now what's important here is that you don't get any bridging which is when you get solder from one pin to another which is exactly what I've got going on here. So I've got a little bit too much solder in places and not enough in that little middle one. better now this is not my best work by any stretch maybe there's a better way that I can handle this there you go they're all held up now perhaps that is going to give me a little bit more stability <laughs> he says Maybe, maybe. Oop. So these are being a bit of a pain. So trying to find a way to, to support this would definitely help at the moment like that I could go like that actually that's pretty good because that's a bit flatter that would work a bit better let's try that you just got to keep trying things until you can find the thing that that balances the best and gives you the sort of the stability that you need however you need it Just doing one half of that one, and then I'm going to turn the whole thing round in a minute. Got to be careful not to interfere with the surface mount stuff, which is already there. got these sides here to do okay give it a close look lovely so that's those hopefully switches on nice and flat now it says front panel component mounting tips. Now we proceed to mount mechanical parts. This is critical. Take your time. Read the instructions. Must not be soldered until they are placed and fully attached to the front panel. So you must not solder them until everything is placed and the front panel is on top. That's very important. That's to make sure that everything is straight and coming out of the right holes in the right place at the right angle. Switches weren't quite supporting with that because they have a little bit of give. And as long as they're straight, as you can see, it's just going to work. It's just totally going to work. So, what is it saying? Let's put the pots on. Cool, right, yeah. So you can see from the screen print that everything goes on this side. So you take a pot. They are all the same, I believe. And you've got three holes and two holes. Just yeah, They can get a little bit bent up in places, so. There we go, put your three holes through there. Try not to scrape around the LEDs because they are relatively delicate. Yeah, I can feel this already scraping around things. <laughs> so put them in carefully, push them through the two lugs as well, and that should all hold on there pretty nicely. 
pretty nicely. So through the three. And then, ah ha ha! With a little bit of firmness, that should be through in order to poke you in the finger. Perfect. Perfect. Next one with finger out of the way. Pull through the three. And then through. <laughs> Dipstick. Right. Oh, there's one more, which is a slightly different orientation over here. Just for fun. So that's all the pots in. Mini jacks. Now it says we're opening the bag. <laughs> Be careful not to mix up the 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 nuts, right, for the pots, and the nuts for the for the jack sockets. Well, that's too late. Too late for all of that. That needed to be a really big label on the outside of the box, not a. Uh, not a point halfway down the page. <laughs> they are similar but different, but we're gonna we'll work that out. We will work that out. Okay. So placing mini jacks on the BCB. Don't solder to the front panel and all the nuts are on. Here are our sockets. So they got this wonderful little leg at the front which pushes into something at the front and then they will push together. Now, these ones are sharing. Are they sharing? They're not sure. Yes, they no, oh, are they sharing? One, two, yeah, they're sharing their their wonky leg, this one here. So this is like the earth that's going in the one in between. So that pushes in and then that clips on nicely. So the one facing it is going to have the same, that same leg going into that same hole over here. That goes in together. So they are facing one another into the same hole. Got that? Good. Do the same here. And with the next row. So those are all in. So we haven't been told to solder yet or put the front panel on yet. We're still waiting to do that. OK, so we've got to put the light pipe crowns on first. So place the LEDs, crowns, light pipe crowns on the front panel. These will fit when they attached the panel and screw all the components. OK, so these, this is, I think, the tricky bit. This may require a little bit of fussing about. So these have got to go over here somehow. And it becomes a whole question of how that actually happens. Now, with the 3U one, I place these in here. Like so. Now, they fit quite well. So do you see what I did there? And you know the way up that I did it is so that the so that the short end goes into the front panel. That seems to make the most sense to me like that. Now if I turn this upside down in order to put it on, it's possible they'll fall out. Maybe not. So maybe I could do it that way around. Because I'm now supposed to attach the front panel. And then screw the bits in. So let's let's see whether that will work. So I've got my thing here. I've got my thing with my crowns in. Slowly put that over the top. Oh, see, one's gone. One's gone. <laughs> Two's gone. Let's put that over. See whether I can reclaim it. Because trying to get those to go in is going to be difficult. Pa 
I did it. Okay. So those are all the way in now. Now I think the method that I use is pretty sound. I seem to put it together enough. Now with the 3U one, I essentially did it upside down. So I put them down like that, then dropped this into the top and lifted it up. And that meant that those crowns always stayed in the front panel. And that's probably a good way of doing it. In fact, let me try that way <laughs> as an alternative. So I'm just going to take that out again. So all of them are in. I mean, you experiment at home with how works best for you. So this is now going to go in this way round, and this way the crowns will not fall out. Are you with me? So all the time the crowns are in the holes, so I'm going to go that way around, jiggle it about until it sits nicely, which it does now. And then that, I think, is perhaps the better way of getting those in without them falling out. Now you've just got to keep it together at this point. Don't let it come apart, otherwise it's all going to be for nothing. Right, now we need to screw in all the parts. So keep it together, don't let it go awry. So you're going to want to do the jacks first. So let's have a look at our screws here. Now we know that the red ones are for jacks because we go sort of outputs with the red. So that's easy. So in that case, we're looking for black ones which are the same size. <laughs> they really are similar, aren't they? Heck, see that one looks bigger to me. So does that one, so does that one, and that one. So I think those are bigger. So I think those are going to be the pot ones. So these here are the ones for the jacks. That's my thinking. So out, we want those to be red. So let's stick one of those on first, see what happens. Yeah. Now what you don't want to be doing is pulling components up into the front panel. You want to make sure it's flush and down. So you don't want to over tighten. It's all looking good at the moment. Now my understanding is we're not going to have to take the front panel off again. So putting them all on is a good idea. Now you may have this very useful little tool in your bag which just lets you tighten those up. But I wouldn't tighten it up now. I'll tighten it up once we've soldered just to give us that little bit of... Thank you. A little bit of leeway. Cockerels have been amazing this morning because they've been having conversations. There's this distant one somewhere else in the village, which you might be able to hear, which is, yeah, which is throwing throwing the conversation backwards and forwards, which is nice, of course. It's nice to think that they've got friends as opposed to just sworn enemies. There we go. Those are all on. So these slightly larger ones go on the pots. It's like a, a delay. It's like having an echo, you know, with very low feedback. <laughs> <laughs> but by the sounds of it it's got three or four taps going on so that's nice I wonder how CV controllable they could become with the right sort of poison okay so this is now screwed together it shouldn't just come apart for any reason I mean I've only done it thumb tight but that should be well tight enough so just check around that it's all flat not looking silly anywhere. That's all good. Then you can solder it. Now it's going to fall over again because it's all balanced on just these four knobs. So you might want to find something to rest it on. 
just to give it a little bit more stability that seemed to be working for me which is quite cool now you just have to be very careful about soldering in here around these sockets because you're going to be right up against your power socket which is going to melt and there's other wonderful surface mount things here as well so just you're just going to want to position it to make it as easy for yourself as possible don't think you need to have it at a particular orientation to solder it whatever it is that's going to allow you to get in there is key at the moment so let's have a go at a couple see where we get to well the cockerels are doing their thing if i can get to that one this one here that pair I think I can get into there too that's good get into here because I'm worried by those surface mount resistors so I got the middle one done that one done not sure about getting to that one at the moment I might have to flip it all the way around on there just mustn't forget <laughs> is the key but let's keep going along in this orientation for the moment so I've got the pot here with this big lug jam a load of solder into then I've got the three pointy bits here those are easy enough There's the last pot. See, that was rubbish. That was just solder onto soldering iron with no regard for anything whatsoever. Let's sneak in there without doing any damage. There's the other pad. So that's all of those there. I do that one yeah all of those all of those okay so just all the tricky bits at the top end now so there's one there let's go turn this around got these bits here to do Oh golly, there's this one right on the edge. Right on the edge here too. So I think I can get into this side. This one and bring in the solder from the top. How do I do that other side? I'm not sure. I'm going to have to come in sort of like this. I can't really see but that seems to have worked cool yeah right good well play me now how am I gonna do these little ones on the edge so I've just got to get in there so now I'll get some solder to it I think that's worked I think that's worked So yeah, these bits here at the end, those are tricky. Definitely tricky. Just got to jam some solder in there and hope you've heated up the pad. 
<laughs> but if we're going to do some troubleshooting, I imagine it's going to be there. So, you want to be checking through. Could you lose track of what it is that you're doing? I think. Just make sure that they're all soldered. Yeah, so then got two lugs and three there. 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 Okay. Looking good. Looking good. You can now use the tool just to tighten up a little bit. All of these bits. So now it says put the knobs on, connect the power cable, make sure it's all working. Right, right, right. We'll do that shortly. So knobs first of all. Let's take everything round to the left. They haven't got screws or anything. These are just going to pop on. So I'm just going to line it up. pretty good seems to be a line just or sort of a ridge that seems to fit just on the edge of the white line so you can feel it going around in crenellations it's a good word word for the day crenellate which is about there they all look good so I'm gonna push it down nice and hard with all the spiky stuff on the underside skewering your fingers <sighs> because we're dead hard we are now I'm just checking on the one that's over there oh it goes all the way flush so look that's no good you're gonna have to go all the way how are we gonna do that probably on the edge of the table <laughs> I should think probably on the edge of the table yeah what I'm suggesting you might do is is just lean it on the edge of the table and see if you can squash it down so that it's a bit more flush. It should go all the way like that, you see? It should go all the way down, not this far down, this far down. Now you can, as I say, you can squash it. Oh, goodness. Or you can push it with something. Put your weight behind it. That's better. This one. That one goes down. This one. They all look good. They look good to me. Great. So this is now ready ready for testing. We'd better do that. I think that's important. So there is the completed one. And that's looking pretty gorgeous. <laughs> it is a marvellous thing. I, I don't know what else to say. It is simply a marvellous thing. So here we go. Here it comes. This is the power. Power's off at the moment. First thing we need to check is the old smoke test so make sure we connect the power correctly you've got the little nick there and the bit on the power thing that all goes in the same way around so you've got red actually at the top so i'm not going to screw it in i'm just going to hold it here while i turn it on just to check if see if anything blows up now obviously it shouldn't because all of the soldering and preparation of this pcb has been done at the factory and has nothing to do with us We've just put these bits on, but it's possible that we've bridged something, shorted something, stuffed something up, melted something, all sorts of things. So the first thing we're looking for is just to see if there's any any fire and also that the lights come on. <laughs> and the lights do come on, which is a, a blessing. An awesome thing, something to be thankful for, I would say, at this time. So that's looking pretty good. It's looking pretty lovely. So let's squeeze it into our one-use space. So it looks magnificent next to the other one. 
I have to say. It's uh, an abundance of molten motion meters. Look, I've got another one here. Amazing. So that's just going to sit there for a minute. Maybe I'll stick in a couple of screws just to secure it. It did come with some knurlies after all. So I'm going to be plugging some things in and out. So we just want to test that it's working. There's no sort of calibration or anything like that required. It should. Work out of the box. <laughs> That's the plan. So let's start off by testing some uh, some modulation through here. So I've got an envelope that's being generated. I'm going to plug into number one. And as you can see, that's already going to town. Just one thing to be aware of, something I've noticed in using four channels rather than three channels, you know, it happens more often, is that I don't have a channel doing something. And just remind yourself to turn that down to zero because everything gets summed to the end here. So if you have nothing plugged into it and it's turned up, that's going to be influencing what's happening out of channel four. It's just something to be aware of because that might push... Uh, audio signals you know beyond where it needs to be or might push your modulation out of the way of where you want it want it to be modulating so just anything that's not going on turn that down so i've now got something coming through here which you can see is also being summed to the output here so that seems to be working so we need to plug that into something in order to make that happen so i'm going to take the output of that Plug that into the CV input on the filter. So that's working fine. Put it on inverse. That's also working fine. Let's take the audio through channel four. Switch that to audio. Take an output. And then turn that up. And that sort of thing. So there you have it, the Molten Motion Meter 1U, four channels of lovely, easy to build DIY goodness for moving and visualizing modulations, for mixing signals and mixing your audio through your system and giving it a wonderfully playful, colorful vibe. Fantastic. I hope that was helpful. I hope that's got you through the build of your own one. If you have any trouble, then, then do let me know and I'll point you directly to Bafaco who will be able to sort you out because I'm no expert in these things. I'm just giving it a go, as no doubt you are. But I hope you got there. Hope you have a working module. And send me pictures. Send, send me pictures. Tag me in. All those sorts of things on the old internet. And uh, that'll be a thrill. I'd like that very, very much. Hope that was useful. In the meantime, go and make some tunes.